And then the other part of the body positivity that I think people don't think about, sometimes what is motivating that is more concerning. Like if you were someone who was mm. quote unquote on the bigger side and you grew up with people not paying you any mm. attention. So it's like you want the attention at what cost? So now that I'm bigger and I just been this way and my whole life I was shamed for being this way, I'm going to do this. But deep down inside, do you want to be do that way or do you want the attention? So now that you got it, you got to sustain it, right? Ooh. So you got to eat the things. You got to show up and you got to do all of this. But like, what do you feel inside? Ooh. Do you really want to be that way? Or is it more important for you to compensate for the 16-year-old girl that's inside that didn't get the attention? Like, those are the conversations that like I like to have because that's going to be the shift long term. Hey you, welcome to Shades of Content, a show that teaches entrepreneurs how to effectively use content to market their business and stay content while doing it. I'm your host Patrice, a wife, a mom of three, and a 15 year public relations and marketing professional who decided to open a brick and mortar content studio four years ago. And I honestly haven't looked back since. Join me as I share my experiences and the experiences of other entrepreneurs who, like me, are navigating this maze of owning a business, running a family, and trying to stay sane and healthy while doing it. I'll tell you, it's an amazingly challenging journey, but I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. See you soon. This episode is brought to you by Black Girl Holidays the content planner and calendar that highlights black women, black girl magic 24 seven, 365. And you guys all knew for 2022, Black Girl Holidays is not only a calendar like it was before, but it's also a full planner, okay? Get your Black Girl Holidays content calendar or planner today by visiting www.blackgirlholidays.com and make sure you use that Shades of Content coupon code so you can get a percentage off. Again, blackgirlholidays.com or just tap the link in the show notes, y'all. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Shades of Content, the podcast that teaches content marketing to entrepreneurs like you and me, but also gives you tips and tricks tricks and all that stuff to make sure that you are a content business owner because if you don't have contentment if you don't have like this peaceful happiness this feeling of this is where you should be and these are the things I need to do to take care of myself then none of the business stuff matters I strongly believe that this episode is brought to you of course by Black Girl Holidays the only content calendar that highlights black women 365 days a year 450, it's 450 events, milestones, birthdays, you name it, all packed in this beautiful content planner slash calendar. You can order yours at blackgirlholidays.com. There's also a link in the show notes. I'm not going to talk anymore because I have a guest today and I'm so excited. Hey, Patrice. Hey, Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> so our names, names are, are both Patrice. Patrice. Y'all are probably like, oh, did she just say hey to herself? <laughs> Number one, you're amazing because we have the same name. Absolutely. Obviously, I agree. We, we here. Um, <laughs> and so, Patrice, you are the owner and lead trainer of Curves and Gains Fitness. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember how we came into contact. I never remember how I come into contact yeah. with people. But I do remember you coming into this space um, and we did a feature on you, a, a content creator series. And you just have this really infectious just exciting, just demeanor about you. Thank you. And um, you're doing like work that not only, like that just helps us all. Right? Thank you, um, thank you. So please, I want you, we're gonna, we're gonna have a conversation here. Tell, tell me more about yourself and how you became a fitness business owner. Okay, so um, Patrice Murphy, Curves and Gains Fitness. I started Curves and Gains in November of 2015. So just a little over six years. My background in education is biology pre-med. So I like to call myself a cool nerd. Um, that's like my little thing. Um, so when I was in school, I always knew I wanted to help people um, more originally on the medical side. So I came out of school. I became a pharmaceutical sales rep. I did that for 10 years. Um, throughout that journey, I learned that what I was doing was helping people, but not in the best way. There were a lot of side effects. It was a lot of like prioritizing money over health. And it just didn't sit well with me. I've always been passionate about fitness as a dancer my whole life. We had to like work out and things like that. I was like the one girl with the guys in the gym. 
Um, so after just working out a lot of my friends, enjoying what I'm doing, like, hey, can you show me how to do this? Show me how to do that. I was like, oh, I can probably do this. So I started working for a friend's gym from high school. Just he was expanding and I started to help him grow. And over time, his clientele became my network and community of people. So that's when I decided I need to probably do this for myself. So that was the origin story of uh, Curves and Gains. And like I said, it started November 15. And it's been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get into all the details. But yeah, so personal training, boot camp classes, booty boot camp classes, fitness coaching, um, nutrition co- consults as well. I do a little bit of everything. So it's a whole health and wellness company prioritizing fitness. Was your transition from being an employee mm-hmm. into being an entrepreneur like immediate? Like, did you, did you just say, oh, no, I'm not doing this no more. Let me do this. Like, what did that look like stepping into owning your own business? So I started my company in November and I was doing it just on the weekends, doing pharmaceuticals throughout the day. I knew I wanted to make a pivot to get to full-time entrepreneurship, didn't know the time and when, whatever. Um, April, three days before my birthday, I got laid off. And I was like, oh, okay, God, we could have talked about this differently, but here we are. (laughs) So at that point in time, I had a hard decision. I had only been in business five months. To say that I was an established company would be a complete lie. I didn't even have plan. It would be times I would show up at boot camp and I would be the only one there. So it was not as easy to make that leap because I didn't really have a lot of strength in my business at that time. But I had a lot of faith. And I was Mm. like, one thing I know I can do, I can hustle. Like, I'm going to work. I can get a part-time job if I have to. Like, whatever I have to do. So that is actually when I kicked into doing personal training because that increased the revenue and clientele base. So... It wasn't easy at all. Like, people ask me that all the time. Like, how did you do it? Was it easy? Like, I interviewed for other pharma jobs. I got a pharma job, negotiated them down to the salary, was supposed to go to Orlando, Florida for trainings on a Monday. Sunday night, I sent the email and was like, unfortunately, I need to decline this position and then cry my eyes out for like an hour. Because <laughs> I know it was something I needed to do, but I was mortified. Like, you just let this go. And it was the ideal opportunity. Like in pharma, layoffs are very frequent. It happens a lot. We had 250 people that got laid off at the time. So recruiters were coming to me before I had time to build my resume. So I was like, oh, no big deal. I'll get another job. But I knew if I didn't take that leap then, I would have never did it. You said something, you said a few things. One of the things that stood out to me was you would show up to boot camp and there would be nobody there. Mm -hmm. That is so, we're in this world now where we show up because people are there. Right, right. right. Social media, i.e. all those things. And I'll, this speaks to me because when I was building this space, mm-hmm. before I had a space, before I even knew this would be where we were, I would have co-work days. I was having co-work days for two years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people would not show up. I would just be sitting there on Snapchat. Like I would pay for the filters and everything, like making it look like people was there. It wasn't nobody in there. Yep. Gym. And still, I would do it again. Yep. Absolutely. And still, I would do it again. Absolutely. So like, what did it, what's going through your mind when you're showing up and you're the only person? Do you feel like you failed? Is it like, it's okay. I'm just doing it again. Like, what? It's a little mindset? bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Um, I think my experience in pharmaceutical and being able to handle uh, rejection very easily. Like, you could walk in a doctor's office, bagels and coffee, think you're about to talk them down. And they're like, I don't have time today. Put it on the couch. And you're like, okay, I have a nice day. You know, so after building up a little bit of a resilience to that, yeah. that helped me accept the rejection. Um, but it did make me think like, dang, do I need to pivot? Is my price too high? Do people not like the location? Are my classes too easy? Are they too hard? I would compare. But one thing um, that was taught to me, because I had a couple of mentors going into arch- entrepreneurship, is you need to know what's going on in your industry. So Mm -hmm. I would go take classes and see what the experience was. Literally from the car to the car. Coming in, was my check-in seamless? Did did I feel like I was waiting? Did they start on time? Could I hear the music? Could I hear instruction? Those type of things. So that helped me kind of continue to mold my classes. So I will make adjustments. But yeah, it sucked. Definitely sitting there like, okay, I'm getting off early tonight. (laughs) It did not feel good at all. At all. But I think why it didn't completely break me, because it we're not talking about like one time this happened. Mm. Like we're talking about several times. Yeah. And fitness is seasonal. 
So but after Thanksgiving, seeing people come out is like, yeah, right. They're like, girl, babe, I'm just exactly. going to start a J word. Right. Yeah. So knowing that it's going to dip down and then but you don't expect it to be nothing. So it's been times it's been a week and nobody's came in the door, you know, so I think previous experience of pharma helped me have a little bit of res- resilience to it, but it was hard. Yeah. yeah it's up. You also said something that um, like going to other, going to not your competitors, but just seeing what other For people sure. are doing, like that is so vital. Like you can't live in the silos. Mm-hmm. Like you have to know what is happening. Yep. All right. So you start the business in 2015. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming things are fine. And then we have a pandemic. Right. Like, so I'm pretty, I know there's things that happen in those for sure, five for years. For sure, for sure, for sure. That's a, that's a, a time that's a, like, for right, sure. That's a defining yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, what is so, as a personal trainer who is working with people face to face, and I feel like personal training is probably one of the industries that were hit hardest immediately. Like right away, we're done here. here. Immediately. How do you, because you're clearly still in business today. Right. You were able to make it through the pandemic. Right. What did the pandemic look like for your business? So it, w- it, it went down and it got really low before we came up because um, at that time, right before the pandemic, like right before the whole go home for two weeks kind of conversation, I was doing site visits with a real estate agent to move into my own space. Like the classes and things that I had built, I had like a three week lag time before you can get in. Like we were busting at the seams for lack of better words. So um, that like completely just hard stopped. And then I didn't have any type of virtual presence outside of like social media and me posting like some, you know, at that time it wasn't reels, but like quick videos or something. I had no presence at all. So because you just didn't feel the need to. I didn't feel the need to. And I I have to say this because probably for easily two and a half years leading up to the pandemic, everybody was telling me, you need to start a YouTube channel. You need to start a YouTube channel. You should do recorded videos. You should do online this. And I'm like, man, I don't got time for that. And I ignored it. And that gut feeling like <laughs> Thankfully, nobody said I told you so back to me. <laughs> they but, said it though. Listen, but I'm telling you that feeling, you like, what, what would it have caused me just to do it? Like, it wouldn't have, it wasn't a priority for me because like I said, I was booming. Like, you had to literally get in where you fit in. When I opened up the classes, it was like, sign up, they're going to be gone, you know? So for me, it didn't seem like a priority uh, at all, but that that was a big deal. So I didn't have a virtual presence. I didn't know what to do. I think I spent like a week and a half just crying, trying to find my life. Um, So I started doing some virtual. And then in the midst of that, my landlord called and was like, hey, I'm actually going to close the doors of the facility. So it doesn't make sense for me to keep it open. I don't know what this pandemic deal is. So at that point, the little bit of optimism of like, this will pass, we'll go back in the gym. I was like, no, there, there was no gym to go back to. So it, it just kept happening. At that time, I also was renting out space in my house. My renter was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go. And I'm like, oh, it's turning up. <laughs> like, I got to work. So right. it just changed. It took me back to 2015, that initial hush, hustle grind. So I was up recording videos, creating like a Vimeo page. So you could go and buy something from me. I was doing lives on social media like multiple times a week. So I was just creating a presence. What's the time frame? Because we're, we're talking Ooh. late March. Yes, yeah, so um, it, was, it was March. And I probably got myself out of the funk about mid-April. Gotcha. Mid-April was when, and he closed the doors the first week of May. So it was probably about a five week yeah. time frame. Um, probably June is when I had a solid rhythm of what I was doing as far as the virtuals. Um, on social media i had enough content that you could buy like a package if you will from me at that point in time and then it was important to me too i was so anxious coming into my classes i always say it's like a party like i'm really particular about the playlist and things like that and i was anxious about will people get the same energy through the screen that they get when they come to my classes because i'm not the only one doing lunges burpees and squats people come for the person in the experience and i was so anxious if they would get that from me through the screen. So I was like hypersensitive about every little detail, buying mics and this and that. Like it was, 
<laughs> did you have a mentor or like someone kind of helping you figure out that process? Like I did. Of taking it? Okay. I didn't. I had some friends that had virtual businesses, but not in fitness. Okay. Um, of course, you know, in any industry, you have colleagues that do the same thing. It's like, hey, what you doing? You won't go live, man. I might just do it. You know, mm-hmm. those type of things, just conversational. But we all were in an area that we weren't quote unquote experts in. Got it. So, you know, like, so once you're figuring out, you figured out, all right, virtual is a, is a move. Mm-hmm. We met during, was that during the pandemic? We, no, or? no, no. We definitely met during the pandemic. It was. Yeah, yes. it was, it was a little bit of time into it. I feel like it might've been the fall. of. I think so. It might've so. been the fall. So I was in a little bit of the of okay. a rhythm by the time you and I met. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Your self-care. Oh, man. <laughs> so my therapist is, she is amazing. Mm. So I was already in therapy okay. prior to everything happening. Um, but I had graduated in a mm. sense that I felt like I can do this on my own right. kind of thing. Um, she was definitely one of my first calls in May. By the time the gym closed, I was, I was done. It was like, okay, let me get back. And I think that for me, I have a hard time accepting titles. Okay. So like when she said, you have depression, I acknowledged that I was in bed. I was eating foods that I don't even eat and blah, 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 all the characteristics. But the, the word it just took me out. So that in itself for probably maybe a week and a half, I couldn't process like me depressed. Like, no, I, 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 I can never. Um, I already had deal, dealt with anxiety leading up to it. But the depression word like almost took me out. So I had to relearn what good looked like. And one thing that I had to do that I think us entrepreneurs need to do more of is be more vocal and not necessarily like do a post because that might not be your personality, but just tell somebody like, listen, if you don't hear from me in a couple of days, call me. Mm. I'm probably hiding from either you or my feelings. Check in on me. So it took me a while to admit it to myself first. Um, And then I have two really good girlfriends that I told um, because I didn't tell my family because I didn't want them to be worried and da 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 So I think self-care for me was first the acknowledgement of what was happening. And then I could kind of work around the things and find a healthier ways. Because one thing about depression, you don't get joy in the things that you love to do. So typically my outlet would be working out because that's what I love. That's my way of blowing steam off or dealing with my emotions. But I didn't even want to do that. So I felt so outside of who I knew Patrice to be. But I needed to accept it's okay if you're not who Patrice used to be. Right. That's also right. okay, That's too. Okay. So that was my first form of self-care. It was acceptance, doing the therapy, and then, like, involving my community. And I mean, like, really close group, like maybe four or five people, my family, and then the two girlfriends. And I still do that now. I still do that now. They know, like, if you don't hear from me, I'm probably avoiding something. So if you don't hear from in. me, I probably need to hear from you. Like, well, so so that's a level of self awareness mm-hmm. finally, and mm-hmm. being able to take it in and understand where you're coming from. But like, what's the other level of like taking on your customers? I'm gonna tell you, like, I have a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. I love trainers. I love working out. Mm-hmm. And I'm a, in my opinion, <laughs> I'm a good client. Okay. Right? I'm gonna do what you tell me to do. Right. I'm gonna eat right. Right. Because I never want to show up when I come to, in the morning. We got to get on that scale. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to say I didn't do what I was supposed right. to do. I want to be like, see, mm-hmm. like that's just me. Mm-hmm. I'm very competitive. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not like that. I was going to say you're the exception. Right. <laughs> a huge exception. Yeah, it's you definitely not that. the rule. Definitely exception. How in the world? And there have been people that have said to me, you should be a trainer. Why aren't you a trainer? I would never do that. Mm-hmm. But in the gym, I'm the one who like do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the reason why I would never do it. Is because if I tell your ass to do something <laughs> and you don't, don't do it, it, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be like, okay, bye. Yeah, See you later. yeah. Okay, so how okay. In the world, do you navigate holding people accountable who are paying you money, mm-hmm. but then also like not taking on their stuff? I don't know that I still have mastered that okay. in six years. That's a fully transparent thing. Like I really like helping people like it just gives me so much joy i have been on so many journeys with people Mm -hmm. from people not being able to conceive because they're overweight and then actually me meeting their kid you know through the process that we did or um my doctor put me on medicine a b and c because i'm overweight and i have high blood pressure so now 
I can uh, get off that medication because of what mm. we did. So people's journey, I'm like, and I tell people all the time, like, don't bring me in if you don't want me in because I'm, I'm in. What I've had to learn over the years and still is a challenge for me is wanting it more than they do. Mm. That is so hard for me. When people come to me and tell me their why, like I, I lost my mother at 15 because of heart disease. And now my doctor's telling me I'm on the same path and da, 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 and I have a daughter and I have to look her in the face and I don't want to be, you know, put her in the same situation. My emotions are like up. So when you say I don't feel like it, I'm like, excuse me. What, should, what you going to tell your daughter? Exactly. Who's going to hold her if you're not here? So I'm like in a little bit. So I have found a little bit of balance in pushing to an extent and also being comfortable with letting people fall. Because hmm. as with anything, if you hold people the entire time, they don't know what it feels like to do it themselves. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Like they don't know what it feels like. So at some point in time, I tell people all the time, my goal is to give you everything I have, my education about nutrition, my skills about fitness, so you can go out and do this without me. Yeah. And then I see you in the gym when we slap a five. Right. That's the goal. So if I like coddle you the whole time, you'll never know what it feels like to do it on your own. So I tried that balance of like, oh no, you're not about to ghost me. We won't do this workout. <laughs> So, oh yeah, I, have, I, I sent videos to my clients last night. Um, hello, you have not That's checked hilarious. it. Yes, I do that because people, <laughs> when things are uncomfortable, the biggest thing is to avoid it. Yeah, just fade to black. I mean, anything shy of coming to your doorstep, we gonna talk about it. Mm. What's up? What's going on? What's happening? You need some new recipes? Okay, let's talk about it. Your knees hurt? Okay, let's do some different let's exercises. Just, like. Everything is a workaround. There's there's not anything that we can't work around besides your effort. That's it. That's the bar. That's that's it. So like if you are willing to try, we're gonna do it all. Like put the pressure on me to figure it out for you. Right. But you gotta show up. You gotta show up. Yeah. That's so funny. some people I do let fall. Some people have gained their way back and came back mm -hmm. to me and we're on round two. Yeah. And they are approaching it totally different now. Um so, yeah, it's hard. It's very hard because I care so much. In the beginning, it was extremely hard. I was, like, emotional. If Do people, you take it personal? Like, oh, absolutely. Say, okay, so if I didn't show up, you'd be like, you take it as a... Not, like, as a direct shot to me, but it's like, so I showed up for you because mm. I care and you don't? Mm. Got it. Okay. Because it was more important to me to sacrifice my time, put everything else that I had to do for my whatever on the shelf, and you didn't think it yeah. was okay yeah yeah I do take that personal because certain stuff is just to me it's not acceptable you're either going to do it mm -hmm. or you're not so you only get one of those like I mean I was like and we was like like you right. only get like one or two of those with me that's just my natural personality right. with friends and family because I'm like there's always a solution if you're open there's always a solution and I think that's also Speaking to just like this entrepreneurship mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. from a customer standpoint, right? Like we are, we love our businesses. We love what we do, whether you're a personal trainer, whether you own a brick and mortar. But when the customer is not giving you what, what their end of the bargain is, mm -hmm. right? Like I provided this, you provide this. Right. And I know it varies for all services, but you know, it. you do take it personally you to see your baby. Yeah. But I'm learning like, I think I'm learning. Like, how do you take the personal out of it? Yeah. Like, so some, <laughs> one thing I do, and this is, it's all out there now. <laughs> we're in the open. I'm the one that when you email camp, it be me. Okay. It be me. Okay. And I use somebody else's name. <laughs> <laughs> that does take you out of it, I guess. Because like people will be like, hey, Patrice, da, 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 da. and so I'll respond, why am I sharing this? on the <laughs> When I do get an assistant, they're going to be like, that's Patrice, whatever. <laughs> if you don't listen, you don't know. But I'll be like, hi, such and such here. <laughs> the assistant. And that's just a tactic that I use to kind of like depersonalize it. You know what I'm saying? Because this is something that I have built Yeah, that is attached exactly to me, as exactly i'm sure your business is too, absolutely you know? so it's like how do we not take it personal how do we not when we do get that oh this such and such wasn't in such and such mm -hmm. da, 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 da. it's not they're not talking about me right as a human mm -hmm. even though this is everything that i love put right. in you know so right. and that's a piece of contentment yeah right? and you I, take care of yourself i think the only thing that i literally take personal like you did this to me 
is when people decide to discontinue and just don't say anything. Mm. Like, nothing. Yeah. That, yeah. I can't. Because we've spent intimate mm. space and time so long, and you could have easily said, I need to move on. That's it. I don't, you don't have to give me a reason why. You could find a trainer down the street. Like I tell people all the time, I'm a customer for services too. Mm. I don't have the same beautician I had right. for everything. Right. I don't have the same right. real tech. So I'm a customer for services too, whether it be time and location, whatever it is that I decided to make a shift, I get it. But I'm extremely communicative. So I just, I, that just grinds me. Like, you know, you could have just told me it's okay. But people feel Awkward they in those do. situations. It's, it's, that's, a, that's a maturity thing. It is. It's, it's, a it's very uncomfortable. Self awareness thing. It's a not maybe in their past not being able to speak up mm -hmm. about how they feel, mm -hmm. being demonized for it. So seemingly something so simple as I found a closer gym. <laughs> it's just or hard. I just want to switch it up. Or I want to do something different. Yeah, it's interesting. And I don't know. I probably I haven't been guilty of that. But I've definitely been guilty of just not saying this isn't working and kind of just falling yeah. apart. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not coming no more. Mm -hmm. It's been great. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll come back. But yeah, but we have to we have to speak up for ourselves in every way. That is very challenging. To me, that is a form of self-care because you I tell people all the time, whether you say it or not, you still feel it. So it's going to be projected in some type of space towards that person, towards someone else who doesn't deserve it. It will be projected. So what's best for everybody is you say in the way that makes you feel comfortable. Right. Like I tell people, you don't have to give me like a, your whole life story. Right. Why? Right. You can just say, hey, you know, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. And shoot a, send an email. Like just say, this is, yeah, just say it. Honor yourself. Just like honor yourself. Yeah. Um, so where are you now? Right. Yeah. Where we made it through the pandemic. We're in 2022. Mm -hmm. Are you still virtual yeah like what does your business look like now okay so i am 100 percent virtual right now still um and i'm gonna be honest that's not completely by choice mm -hmm. i am looking to move into a brick and mortar space again um i always say in god's timing if i had it my way i would have been in already but you right. know what when he decides that's what i need to do that is when it will happen um i'm excited to do that because my, I guess, favorite part of all of the things that I do is teaching classes mm -hmm. and that interaction with people, seeing them smile, seeing them sweat, me encouraging them, get up off the floor, blah, blah, blah. And it's just something different about doing it in person. I do classes where they're not um, stream where I can't see you. Like, I have to be able to see you. Mm -hmm. That's clear from okay. the beginning. Like, I don't care if your kids are running around naked in the background. Like, I do not I care what's me. happening. Bonnet on. <laughs> Pull up. So it's right. like, this is just about you right now. Yeah. So um, I do get moments, but it's just not the same on the screen. So, yeah. So I do um, personal training and classes virtually. I also am a fitness coach, which is um, new to my bag. And I'm I new like seven months. Okay. Um, what I enjoy about it is a very intimate experience. I literally talk to them every single day. And that's right. like group coaching. And so it's. It's one on one, okay. but we have moments where we do things as a group. Got it. So sometimes we'll do a group workout. Sometimes we'll do a group mindset call to just talk about like, where's your head right now? You know, how are you feeling? Are you discouraged? Are you tired of chicken breast and broccoli? You know, whatever the thing is, you know, because <laughs> some people think like that's the only thing I can eat yeah, yeah, at yeah. this time. So um, but it's one on one. And the reason why I like it so much is because I have a very niche audience who I attract. I attract women that are either working full time or entrepreneurs or sole entrepreneurs. And I also have a little pocket of medical professionals. I think that's a little bit of me, you know, with my pharma. But the other part of that that people don't talk about, all of these women identify themselves as being associated with anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. Though at some point, whether it's current, they're working through it, they've gotten through it, whatever. The reason why is because I see a lot of me in some ways in them. And helping them navigate things. Like, for instance, one of my young ladies over the holidays, she went back home and she was like, it's very hard for me to tell my family no. And I get really anxious. And I'm like, listen, I have had to go through that. I've done that with my mother. I've done that. Like, it's hard. But you have to choose yourself. So we not only do the physical we do the mental, emotional. We do affirmations together. We do meditation together. And I, we talk about the hard stuff. Like there was another young lady. She 
felt like she was self-sabotaging because she hadn't been under a certain weight in so long. She was scared of the success. So she would stop and go and stop and go. So it, it was the fear, not even a failure of the success. So we went a deeper dive. What has happened? So I don't like to use the word therapy because I respect therapists 100%. But it's me being able to use my life experiences through helping people and what I have experienced to help them understand what's going on here. Because we can do all the burpees and we eat all the salads, but if this isn't going to shift, then it's going to be the same thing. So I do really, really enjoy that. Um, and I have a small group of women we talk, and that's that's who I sent my video to. Gotcha. Like, Hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. So this is actually a great segue. Um, if you watched the show, you saw my last interview, we are doing a current events segment i guess okay. i don't have a name for it but whatever okay <laughs> and so that is when i talk with a guest about something that's happening in the world okay maybe it's my entrepreneurship maybe it's not but this topic relates to you i feel like you would be a great person to talk about this okay so today's topic current events is body positivity mm -hmm. this movement of being accepting and happy and boldly professing your body as it is and owning it versus you are not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And okay. So as a person who consumes content, I'm a marketer. I love branding. I see this very often. I'm also a person who has three kids. <laughs> okay. One just turned three. I take care of myself. I work out. I have a lot of demands on my life, but I put my health first. Am I naturally petite? Yes. But have I been 190 pounds after just having a baby? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, so I don't say this from a judgment standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say that I believe everybody should love themselves. Part of loving yourself is being who you are. The other part of loving yourself is taking care of your body. Internally and externally. So I would love to know your take on it. Yeah, no, I think this this is a great topic that I don't think is discussed mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. because um, coupled with body positivity, it has to be a form of being healthy, too. So I think that with the movement of body positivity and it's encouraging more on people on the plus size to be excited about where they are and how they look and be comfortable in whatever they wear. Right. right. Um. I am with that with limitations yeah. because if you're taking blood pressure medicine every day and you're taking medication for diabetes type 2, which is 100% reversible mm. based on your habits, um, I can't co-sign on it, right? I do feel like on the other side of it, then you are not healthy is also something we don't discuss because when you consider not healthy, people always assume it's somebody that's bigger, there's right. a lot of people that wear a size six that are not healthy. A lot of them. Mm. And I train some of them, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's not even so much about the physicality of it all. It's more about the habits because they are smaller. They haven't had issues with worrying about a quote unquote gut. You eat Oreos and ice cream. You're not getting enough protein. And mm. as we're getting older, because we ain't 20 somethings no more. You need that protein in your diet. You need to be aware of good fats and bad fats and what's coming with that saturated fat and greasy foods and things like that. Because you don't gain 100 pounds, you know, being unhealthy is not OK. Being unhealthy is also a mental thing, too. Mm. So not taking care of yourself, being in a space of avoidance. Anytime something is uncomfortable, you retreat. That's a form of being unhealthy, too, regardless of what you physically look like. Right. So I mm. think that this is to me, a topic that people need to talk about more, both sides of each both coin. Sides. Because when you think of body positivity, it's like, yes, girl, do it. I want you to do it, but I want you to do the right thing. The right like I tell my clients when they get in consultations, like, yeah, high blood pressure running my family. So actually bad habits running your family, Ooh. not high blood pressure. Ooh. Nobody comes out the womb with high, high blood, blood pressure. pressure. You can come out with asthma. Right. Some respiratory stuff, but high blood pressure is habitual. Mm. I come from a line of heart disease, all of that kind of stuff. So my leeway in wiggle room to eat fatty foods and things that will cause high blood pressure is a lot lower. That does yeah. not mean I will automatically have it. What it does mean is if I'm not focused, 
I'm surely going to have yeah. it. That's two different things. Well, diabetes running my family, no bad habits do. And you've learned that and you've normalized you've it. You've normalized it. It's not okay. Unless you have type one, that is the only one that is like you're born, born with. with it. Yep. No. So that is the other part of you're not healthy. You know what I mean? You could be smaller, but think in your mind, well, everybody, my mom and them. No, like that's not true either. Mm. So I think with the topic, not just talking about them, but talking about both sides is very important. And people kind of want to just stay on the positive side because it feels good. Right. Yeah. That's such a good point. And I, I mean, I, just hearing you say that from that standpoint, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's all, it's every end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And also with that, I'm smaller, mm -hmm. I look healthy, mm -hmm. or I'm embracing body positivity for the outward world mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. But here it is. If you, I've heard this on 19 Key said it, I can't trust nobody that puts bad stuff in their body. If you'll treat yourself bad, then you gonna dog the hell out of me, right? right? Like, exactly. You don't need you, you. There's this. There's something that's not. There's something in here that is not allowing you to put the best in your body. For sure. Sure, you can cheat, mm -hmm. right? You can mm -hmm. have a little burger, fries here and there. But yep. at the end of the day, the the total consumption of is what is gonna have those like long lasting results. Absolutely. And if you honor your temple, no matter how big you are, like no matter how small you are. If you're saying, you know what, I need to eat this, not only because it's healthy, but it, I feel better when I eat this. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Like, you you know the difference. You Your know the difference. Your body tells you. Yeah. And then the other part of the body positivity that I think people don't think about, sometimes what is motivating that is more concerning. Like, if you were someone who was mm. quote unquote on the bigger side and you grew up with people not paying you any attention. Mm. So it's like you want the attention at what cost? So now that I'm bigger and I just been this way and my whole life I was shamed for being this way, I'm going to do this. But deep down inside, do you want to be do that way or do you want the attention? So now that you got it, you got to sustain it, right? Ooh. So you got to eat the things. You got to show up and you got to do all of this. But like, what do you feel inside? Ooh. Do you really want to be that way? Or is it more important for you to compensate for the 16-year-old girl that's inside that didn't get the attention? Like, those are the conversations that like I like to have because that's going to be the shift long term mm. like you don't want to be able like you can't go somewhere and walk for a long time because you got lower back pain or your knees hurt and things like that that's not healthy it's not you want to live like that you go get a physical and you're plus size and everything checks out i'm slapping you a high five get it sis. <laughs> yeah like you know all bodies are, are created different nobody's going to look the same but it's about being healthy all around and part of that too is the mental game of what's motivating that mm. like what's behind it some people genuinely are just like i love me yeah but the the percentage of that i think is running that race is smaller than what You're is right. perceived absolutely absolutely we we are we already know what what motivates us For at sure. this point For and, sure. and as our as we get older younger kids come up mm -hmm. and they are more ingrained that is more ingrained in them than it was for us ever so it's um very interesting this was a bomb kind of <laughs> yeah. it was it was i it love was this good. topic this i love this good. topic yeah because it's usually really looked at from a linear lens so. it is yeah it is patrice you're amazing i hope you know that i feel like you do know that you are just i, I always love talking to you um please tell our listeners and our viewers how they can learn more about you, work with you, and just get all of your vibes. Yeah, so I'm on pretty much every platform as Curves and Gains. So that's uh, Instagram Curves and Gains, Facebook Curves and Gains. If you want to work out and sweat with me, uh, YouTube Curves and Gains. If you like, let me just check her out before we buy right. into it. Go ahead. <laughs> right. um, it's Curves and Gains on YouTube. But if you're like, I want to make some long-term lifestyle changes, like I'm sick of myself. Like I tell people, the people that have the yo-yo going up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. I lost the weight, I gained the weight. I lost the weight, I gained the weight. That type of person that's ready for long-term change, they will benefit from the fitness coaching. And you can email me um, or go to my website, curvesandgains.com. Everything is curves and gains across the board um, to make it just super easy. Yeah. And if you slide in my DMs, I will answer. I am a DM answerer. Okay. <laughs> Most of you are like, you ain't going to respond, but I do. <laughs> slide. Yeah. Uh, so Patrice's info is all linked in the show notes. So mm -hmm. you don't even have to search. Just scroll on down, click all the links, connect with her, um, and, and commit to a better you. Whatever that means for you. 
We right. all know what we need to do. Mm-hmm. And we know it. And the, 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 the shifts happen when you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you say, you know what? I need to do this. Yep. Whatever it is. So thank you. You're welcome. Can I just say one more thing? Okay. One thing I always <laughs> like to tell people, it's always you versus you in anything in life, mm. especially fitness. So be the person that's going to be the cheerleader. Be the person that's going to actually do it. Don't be the one that's going to convince yourself that you can't. Don't be the person that's going to tell yourself no when you need to say yes. Like it's always an internal battle. You can solicit a community of support, but it's always you versus you first. So continue to choose you first. That would be my like parting word, if you will. (laughs) And on that note, make sure y'all subscribe, tap that subscribe button, share the episode, give us a rating, give us a review. And thank you. You're welcome. See y'all next week. Yay. All right, now, y'all, don't forget to connect with Shades of Content on Instagram at Shades of Content and with me, Patrice Camo, at Patrice Camo. And also be sure to rate this show, leave a review, and subscribe because that's actually the only way that we're going to grow. I'll see you next week.